right, what up YouTube? You guys ready to dive deep? I got an interview set up with the CADEX team. This is gonna be the first DEX that's launching on Cadena, and it's gonna be the only DEX. And this DEX is going to blow every other DEX out of the water, or it's going to be a direct, like, where they're gonna run side by side. This DEX is gonna be off the hooks. And if you guys don't understand what a DEX is, go take a look at Uniswap, go take a look at Pancake, go just look at the charts. From the time that they launched to where they're at right now, and you know those Uniswap fees that, what are they? Uh, arm or just a leg or is it a kidney? I forget whatever they're charging now. It's probably gone up since then. <laughs> you probably got to sign the rights over to your firstborn child. Guess what? CADEX, no fees, right? You're going to be able to swap transfer assets for free. And guess what? We're going to leak some good news in this interview. So it's going to be off the hook. I personally am predicting that as far as TVL, I think that this DEX is going to break every other record. And with Everything that you guys are gonna learn in this video, if you guys miss out on what's about to come with this one, y'all guys followed me down the Cadena rabbit hole, you guys followed me down the Flux rabbit hole. This one's gonna be it, guys. This is the one that you do not wanna miss out on. I promise you that. I am going to have a price prediction video, but I can't mix them with the interviews and regulations and all those things. So, needless to say, dive in guys guess what this video is for entertainment purposes only i'm not a financial advisor i never advise that you buy sell trade or hodl any cryptocurrency you should always consult with your own financial advisor before making any investing decisions with all that being said let's get it What up, YouTube? I got the CADEX team on the show right now. It's going to be the first DEX launching on Cadena, so I'm pretty hype about it. I'm going to let these gentlemen introduce themselves, and we're going to dive right into it. What up, guys? So, uh, thanks for having us, Ryan. It's uh, great to be here on this fine Tuesday morning. <laughs> Big fan of your show. Uh, you've done a ton for the Cadena ecosystem, uh, and so you know we're really thankful to be here. Thank you, guys, man. It's an honor. Oh. Hi, everybody. I'm Daniele. I'm in charge of tokenomics and finances at CADEX. And Ryan, I really love your interviews that you did with Doug and Stuart, so I really like to be here. Thank you guys, man. It's an honor to have you guys on the show. I'm so excited for this. I think this is going to be the most anticipated DEX launch in the history of the crypto ecosystem. I'm not going to lie. No pressure. No pressure. Um, so I'm, I'm Grant. I run community for CADEX. I've helped a lot to design like our governance model and like I've helped Danny with like some tokenomic stuff as well. I'm Frogman. Uh, <laughs> right on, man. I am Mandrake in the chat. So probably somebody remembers my name. And I'm in charge of tokenomics and finances at CADEX and also all the, you know, business side, the strategic side of things. Nice. So how did you guys end up building CADEX or like how did that get started and how many people do you guys have in your team now? That's a good question. The team has grown a lot. I was initially brought into CADEX by uh, Danny, by Mandrake. You know, I, I met somebody at like a, a mixer. They started telling me about uh, Cadena and, and the power it had and that it was basically, you know, this insanely undervalued layer one. And I was like, sold, like, what can I do? How can I help? And I had, I was working previously for, for Fade Protocol doing community management for them. And so I was able to sort of, you know, join the CADEX team and really like get our community like fired up and like start to like build out our socials and, and everything there. And on top of that, like, so something we're, we're doing that's really cool that we're actually going to be running these tests live in our Discord. This is like a totally new reputation system that nobody else has really done, at least that I'm aware of. So we're working with this company called SpotCoin, and they basically build their own type of blockchain that's based on trust signals from the community. So we're going to be implementing this really cool system that's basically similar to like an upvote downvote system um, that will basically track like reputation and, and trust signals within our community. The problems we see in, in other DAOs is that it's very hard to know like who is definitively like a good actor versus who is a bad actor and who has who's like intrinsically aligned with the protocol, who is in it just to like make money. We're actually going to create like a visual metric for every single user in the, the CADEX Discord and in our community 
to really like showcase who's in it to win it versus mm-hmm. who's kind of just like hanging out. So the system will basically function as like an upvote downvote system. Are aligned with the protocol, you're working on like positive things in the DAO, and other people recognize that they'll actually be able to give you like GMI points. The the whole system is called Wagme, which is like we are going to make it. And so when you receive GMI, that's going to make it points, and those points will be tracked always across your account. And actually, this system could be expanded to the entire Cadena ecosystem. And as more DAOs begin to form on Cadena, those points could basically follow you to every different DAO, every different Discord, uh, and create like an entire ecosystem, like trust system itself. Mm-hmm. That's huge, um, dude. And then and then mix that yeah. with the fact that you can flex your NFT to show your exactly. That's um, huge. Right. That's and that NFT, NFT can an NFT can log like your reputation score within Discord. You'll also be able to see like how long a user has been staking their KDX for. So you'll really know like immediately upon joining as a new member, like oh, like this person's been staking for like nine months. Like they're they're in it for a long haul. Like I should trust what they say. And because that also ties to like your voting power, you really know like who in the community is like a strong member, who's a strong, like aligned member with Cadex yeah. versus someone who comes in who has no no staking metric, who has no reputation score and is like potentially like posting like you're gonna be like all right like maybe this guy or this girl like isn't really like trying to help out cadex that much they're just in here to like mess around that's so Um, sweet i wonder if you guys could do something where you were able to because you're getting points right like gwi points or whatever you said i wonder if you could take those and then allow people that only had like say 100 gwi or a thousand to mint a specific nft and flex it like a badge you know it's so funny you say that That's, um, because it's like it, not, it makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the GMI uh, then also like NGMI will function to really like define like yeah. who's a good member of the community and, and who isn't. Yeah. That's yeah. freaking awesome. I know everybody's going to be asking. So let's get this out of the way in the beginning. Uh, so when can we expect like when's the launch? What about token sales? Because everybody's like, like, when can we buy CADEX? When can we buy CADEX? I'm like. Oh no, guys. Okay, yeah, I get the excitement. <laughs> I love that. And I really We're excited too. Like. Yeah. I think, I'm sure you, I don't uh, want to say it's official, but like, can you give us like a ballpark or any like. I will give you the full picture. So in July, we had the first sale for, for the community and we raised, um, we sold 16% of our tokens to investors. We raised a decent amount of capital. And with that, we're running the operation right now. So what's going to happen next? It's actually, this is actually the first time we say it. But we're going to have a public sale for 1% of the token before be the launch. A million KDX will be open for purchase. Wait, exactly. You guys, you guys haven't said that publicly anywhere yet? Not yet. So wait, wait, so we, we're going to have a we're going to have the ability, ability to buy a million tokens. Oh, the uh, there will be 1 million tokens in total for sale. Yeah. Yeah. For, you know, just anybody. Anybody. And when is that? And when will that start? The second Shorten. that it goes live, is it going to be like a, a week before, or is that like something that happens before a normal launch? Exactly, it's going to happen before the launch. Yeah, I don't know how far it will be from the launch, but like we are talking weeks, just you know, a couple of weeks, or it can be you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Not a couple of months. Right? <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So, <laughs> do you guys have a plan to go on any show and live stream when it goes public? Because I would absolutely love to have you guys. It's on the making. Yeah, you guys don't already have other plans or other. But either um, way, I want to live not, stream it with or without you. Not yet, so. but, <laughs> not yet. But like, we would love to make like another video for the launch for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It would make a That's lot of sense. We so it might happen in a couple of weeks. Might happen in a couple of months. What is uh? Not, what are, no, we, not a couple months. Sorry, I was. No, it's not a couple of months. Not, I was, not, <laughs> That's not. Um, let's say it right. Yeah. So we're gonna set that one percent for the public. Okay. We. Also, I'm gonna. This is also like another news that is not out there. We're gonna offer a staking program for first investors because, like, Cadex was built around the, the idea to, you know, be successful together. Like, we're not looking for personal success, and so we want to reward first investors because they've been waiting for six months to get their tokens. And, you know, building a Dex is not that easy. Like, it requires time and efforts. So we want to reward them, and we're gonna give them the possibility to stake their KDX and get liquid KDA rewards in exchange. So it's going to be really interesting. Also consider now that KDA grew so much in price, so much in value that these people are going to make, you know, some serious money. And it's it's just because we want to give back, you know, we want to reward them for their efforts, yeah. for supporting us. 
That's yep. so freaking cool. Shooting. That's what so, it is. So when is um when this actually happens? Because everybody's gonna be like, what wallet do I need? Where do I need to have? Do I need KDA? Do I need? If somebody wants to get in in the, on that that next public sale, it would, what yeah. would be the best asset to have? Cadena? Yeah, you would probably need Cadena to buy KDX for the you know the, the, this one percent. But as the you know the bridge is finalizes, uh, we're gonna open the sale for any token. Like even stablecoin, BTC, Ethereum, whatever you you want to bring. Yeah, and of course we'll we'll have more details to share on this as we get closer to the actual sale date. So when these bridges come, what are what are going to be the first coins that get bridged? I know I saw Ethereum, I saw Bitcoin, and are we going to have stablecoins? Yeah, yeah. So uh, like what you're saying, like uh, ERC twenties will be able to be basically wrapped and sent over, and then we're working with Choice Stablecoin right now that we feel is really one of the best actual like algorithmic stablecoins on the market. And we've had like fantastic conversations with them so far. So we're, we're really looking forward to bringing them into Kadena. That's huge, man. I, please tell me, it, can we can we get out that it's not Tether? It's not, it's not Tether. It's Thank not you. Tether. No, <laughs> tether is like uh, like Schrodinger's Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like thank you. Their, thank you, man. Thank yeah. you guys. It's both worth a lot of money and no money until you look at their accounting and <laughs> backed by Evergrade paper loans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's uh <laughs> I'm not a tether fan. I'm not a tether fan. Yeah. I know ever I don't think any I don't understand how it I don't understand how the community itself is not trying to eradicate that from the ecosystem. It will happen eventually. Yeah. I mean the futures are algorithm stable coins. Yeah. For artificial sure. stable coin. Like you actually need a protocol that replicates the value of a stable coin, but without, you know, the need for collateral. Because yeah. eventually regulation is gonna tackle stable coins and but not algorithm stable coins because you yeah. cannot do anything about them. They're decentralized. They reproduce a price, but they're not actual they're not like backed by like literal like yeah, paper exactly. USD. They're not working as a bank. So, so can you know, you explain that to me then. I don't understand what that what an algorithmic stablecoin is, and I know it. Oh, that would email. make such a huge difference because consider when you have tether, they have the possibility to print more tether. So what they do is that they print more currency. They might enter the market with this currency, make some profits, be you know market movers, actually manipulate the price of Bitcoin in this case. And get profits on that and then you know just grow their ecosystem their you know market cap based on these moves of like some sort of like artificial printing of money like what the government does as well with inflation right yeah but when you have an algorithm stable coin you cannot do this process like because the algorithm stable coin works in a way that people to replicate you know to create this algorithm stable coin need to bring the same amount of value in another asset in the protocol pretty much Right. Just to give a general overview of how it works. Is that what is that what Luna's doing with Terra's exactly. stable coins yeah, yeah. UST? Precisely. So like exactly. you whatever yeah. the price gets offset, people will burn Luna to mint that one. So it always like people will like the community almost will never let the stable coin get out of price, right? Exactly. Right. And, and also you will never have this artificial uh floating of money because it needs to be backed. Like people need to bring asset to, you know, create the stable coin. There's always going to be representative value there. There's no like way to have like imaginary value. You know that because you have one Terra, it's always representative of, of other assets. 100%. That's huge. Instead of like like fiat, I mean, fiat is what we're all trying to get away from, which is like a faith-based system. And sort of the way, you know, things are looking right now, like your dollar is no longer worth really $1 anymore. 100%. Yeah, not even close. And it's but, uh, by the minute in the time it takes YouTube to pay me my money, uh, depending on the inflation rate that month, because I'm it's like 50 days out from the first day of the month, I do mm -hmm. a whole month's worth of work for YouTube, then they decide how much money I made in that month. And then it takes them 21 days to send me my check. So in that 51 day period that it takes me to get my check from YouTube, I've lost roughly 15%, if not more. That's Isn't insane. That, that's effed up. Like, I don't, I don't understand how long it's going to take for like the Gen Z generation to really start waking up and taking over social media because they're so fed up with the fact that as a single parent, you have to work two jobs overtime. Like at minimum wage in the United States right now, if you make minimum wage, you you won't be able to afford to live in a one bedroom apartment in a shithole by yourself, let mm -hmm. alone support a kid because our Uncle Sam's just making that printer go burr. It, it's just that simple. So yeah. Until yeah. until no, we right. until we turn that printer off, you know, which the from what I understand with inflation, it's so bad right now. And this is why people like asking, like, when's the bull run ending? When's this cycle going to end? And I'm like, I, I don't see how it does, because where do you move? You move your money into gold? No, you move it into no. fiat? Hell no. That it leaves you with one option. It's either 
interact with cryptocurrency or you're you're just doing yourself the biggest disservice in your life like it's no matter a matter of like oh what if bitcoin or when it's, it's just now it's like uh, anthony papalano said yesterday that inflation is at this point is so bad that we can't ease because when we ease and we increase quantitative easing it always sends us into a recession and like the political powers don't want to see us you know the economy just crumble in a in a couple months so the only way to to really prevent it is to print more and not just a little bit more like continuously dumping massive amounts of money. So it's like, looks like the S&P is going to keep putting in new all time highs every week for the next <laughs> until that printer breaks, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's eventually it's going to be the price for you. Yeah. And, but, and but one thing we're seeing a lot right now is since crypto exposure is like at an all time high, right? Like more people are aware of DeFi, more people are aware of like the NFT market. Um, we're seeing more people like treat crypto and DeFi as like their native like banking system. Mm -hmm. um, and so this this like continuous approach to like looking to the future and how we can like build on DeFi, I think is really just like a bullish signal for everyone. Like all these like kids who are turning 18 and are able to like enter DeFi and experiment and play around and like, you know, play with like lending markets and, yeah. and all of this other stuff and, and just like learn and educate themselves is I think one of the best possible things that can happen. I agree. And I think that like that's where like people I, I it's hard to explain to people that that are new to the space, but we've watched at least 14,000 because that's what I'm just going based off of what coin market cap actually has. So I don't know if those are dead coins or if it's like every coin that's ever been launched on coin market cap is legit still on there, but they just broke over 14,000. So we've seen 14,000 different blockchains for the most part um, attempt in, in one way, shape or another to become a infinitely scalable proof of one layer blockchain. They, they, they all wish. fail. Canada's the only one to do it. They the wish. Only one. So like people talk about how smart Vitalik is, how smart Gavin Woods is, but you talk about Will and Stuart, they oh, did man. something that so the amazing. other 14,000, the, the smartest minds in the world, like people don't understand what, what, what we're, we're looking at here. When people are miss the boat, Kadena's $20. I'm like, miss the boat. Like you weren't, you might've missed the, like, you're not, you're still on the shore. Like you got to put on your sandals because you don't want to get your shoes wet because the boat's like <laughs> feet offshore. Run to that boat. Yeah. <laughs> like take a jump. You're, you didn't miss the boat. Like the boat's still docked. Like the anchor's still down guys. Like where this will go. Like the only thing that there's nothing that's going to stop it. It's just game theory, evolution, survival of the fittest. It's the strongest, the fastest, the smartest, the hardest, and it has everything that it needs in place besides DeFi. Right, and you saw what we saw as well, because like as as soon as we knew about Cadena, I was like, okay, this makes the perfect blockchain to build a DEX. Like you have no transaction cost. It's secure because it's a proof of work. It has like infinite smart contract possibilities because of Pact. It's interoperable because it means you can interact with other chains like Polkadot, Luna, Silo, and many more in the future. And, you know, what can you ask for more? Like, there's it's the perfect blockchain. It's the perfect blockchain. And, you know, the ecosystem was not, it's not alive yet. Like, we would be the first DAP to live on, on Cadena. Yeah. So, you know, there was the possibility, there was the room, you know, to enter the space. But n not many people saw the opportunity. Because yeah. when I first heard about Cadena, I was like, wow, where is like, what is the problem in that? Like, I don't, it took me like a month to really, you know, get over the fact that it's a scalable proof of work. Dude, I, yeah, I mean, it's like that, like, <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what everyone has been trying to do since like, what, 2015? Really, really? It's like, even before, yeah, even before that is ensure like a proof of work system, like actually effectively scales and, and the Cadena team did it. So I interviewed, um, I interviewed Doug, the I made a price prediction video where I just, it was trending or somehow it came across my radar. So I always like make price predictions when anything's trending to like help people out and like, Hey, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then that got Doug onto the show. And even when I was listening to Doug, cause I've interviewed so many people and it's always like, Oh, I'm infinitely scalable. So I'm like, I uh, just like, kind of like, yeah, all right. And like, I, I didn't even really like, I, I believed him, but at the same time in the back of my head, I'm like, I've heard this 14,000 times. Yeah. Like, you know, I didn't even buy, I waited. I, it took me like a month, literally a month of doing like really in-depth research to go, holy F. And I bought like an F ton at a dollar forty or whatever. And then like even just I kept watching my own videos. And then I went and sold 70% of all my altcoins and put it all in and at four dollars. Mm, that was seventy nine. I was like You deserve your success, Ryan. That was it was, yeah. it was Good call. It was, yeah, I think it, well, I think I got kind of like lucky that, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. And no, was, man, was it inevitable? Like, like, how uh, did, like it's that, like, that I, is one thing, but also like, you know, big players really understood Cadena and they entered the space. So it's, it's like 
retail force, but also like institutional force. I underestimated. That's why I'm saying because I would I didn't think that with what they had up and running without DeFi and without a few more key things in place that it would have got to the twenty dollar mark. Not uh, twenty, but almost but thirty. Just the start, right? And like just the beginning. You know, tomorrow you're gonna see you know new functionalities, new projects like Cadex. No NFT. Every week I'm seeing new stuff. Yeah, like Cadena on Twitter, like it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be easier to access as well in the future. You know, you're gonna yeah. be, you're gonna find new extension, new wallet extension. They're, they are always working on UX, like to improve the UX because Cadena, of course, is a great tech, but it needs to work on like the UX needs to improve a little bit. Can you explain um, what UX is for anybody that's watching that doesn't know what that experience. means? So okay. it's really much like what you have to do to, let's say, in our case to bring to enter a pool like to enter the decks like how difficult and how pleasant is to enter our decks so we like work very hard to make sure that you know what you have to do to enter the decks and to provide liquidity or to swap your asset it's easy to do it's easy and accessible for everybody because if we make some complex tech move like some different some difficult like uh, clicks that you have to do and some you know cross chain whatever uh, transaction is not accessible for anybody then we need to have like a user-friendly platform. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Now, how are the speeds on? Like, I don't know if you guys have, have messed around on Radium or on Pancake Swap as of late. I, I, I was making a Cadena price prediction videos before you guys got on here, and I got to the point where I was kind of showing them like what, like when Cadex and DeFi pops off, I'm going to be doing all of these things. I'm going to teach you guys how to why sell something that you can, if you sell and you're the smartest person in the world, you sell at peak and you and you get back in at absolute bottom. Maybe, maybe you do good, right? But if you can make the same amount in DeFi through the bear market and not risk missing out on the next leg up, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to sell my KDA unless it's like uh, overwhelmingly, like I don't have a need to. I'll just use DeFi to continue to generate gains, whether we're in a bear bull, there's no real need. Where I'm going with that is I was on Radium and it is painful, bro. Like it took me 45 minutes to stake, to add my liquidity, to take those, harvest what I got, stake my 45 minutes to do like five pairs. And that was me like, yeah. And, and you're not even in a, in a proof of work blockchain. You're still giving up on security. Yeah. Plus you have this unpleasant experience. That's is, how is, how is CADEX going to be on speed? Like, is it going to, am I going to be oh. able to like, boom, 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 or is it going to be like, it's going to be lightning speed. Literally mm -hmm. the moment that you click, <laughs> the transaction is going to be yeah. sent. It's going to be sent to the mempool, going to get picked up. You know, the Cadena strength as a, you know, now you're very aware how powerful it is. And Cadex takes advantage of all the, you know, Cadena functionalities. And we're, we're seeing a lot of people, I, I pay attention to all like the mining, uh, the minor chats, uh, like people like looking to buy and sell uh, like KD5s. And also like if anyone wants to become like a miner on Cadena and, and operate an ASIC, you totally should. You're working to further decentralize the system, strengthen the integrity of the blockchain, all the chains actually. We're, we're seeing so much more interest in people actually starting to mine KDA. And all that does is just like improve the overall integrity and speed of the network. And as more chains get added, that even further, you know, improves like the security of Cadena. As more miners enter the system, like we can, we see that basically transaction speeds like just get faster. The whole system just like becomes an even smoother experience. Faster and more decentralized as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to work out a deal with any one of the Cadena miners. Um, I would love to promote for them, bring them on the show. So if they're watching this and they would like to reserve five or 10 miners for my community whenever they get their next batch in. Mm -hmm. I would love to bring them because I have so many people that are begging me like, hey, can you get in touch with them? And I'm like, I'm trying. I, I will said he was going to try to reach out to them. So <laughs> if you guys have any plugs at the at there, uh, please pass them our way because I would love to do something special with them and really I, it's like kind of like a hard thing because they're 100% sold out. So they don't need me to help market, you know, Caddx and Cadena, like while we we work closely with Cadena, like it's two separate so, teams, yeah, it's totally separate, separate entities. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any contacts right now, but we can help you out for sure. All right, cool, man. Yeah, let me know if you guys get in contact with them. Uh, just pass them my information, and then uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna keep going at this at every angle until we can maybe get them on the show. So, <laughs> so what else? Like, how is your community growing? Like, what? What have you guys noticed any insane growth rates over the last couple of weeks? Because I yeah, I mean, we've, our, our Discord has grown in membership pretty significantly. I think we're close to about 2,000 members there. Our, our Twitter is up to 6,000 followers. I finally got Mandrake on Twitter after oh, all these months. <laughs> I finally got him to be on there. Okay, um, it had to happen. <laughs> it had to happen. 
I'm with you, man. I, I just got on there. I mean, I've been on there, but I didn't start using it until right. you know, about a couple months ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a lot right now, like with um, th those community programs I was talking about earlier, like with the reputation system. That's actually, we're going to be testing that um, over the next few weeks. We're going to basically open up our Discord uh, and run these uh, like community tests where people will be assigned like a role. They'll be given uh, the ability to like distribute like GMI and NGMI points to other users, and we're basically going to simulate a DAO. So we'll like bring proposals forward, like all theoreticals, of course, um, and sort of just like see what happens. Um, because wow. we really want to ensure that like this system is super powerful. So like our Discord is gonna basically uh, be like an intro to how DAOs work for a lot of the Kadena community. So we really just like want to showcase yeah. like the potential of that. Now, am we I gonna be able to, it reminds me of like Reddit where you're upvoting, right? Like you said, so, Wait, is there anything that prevents people from like get me getting like 20 of my buddies and saying, hey, join this Discord, upvote all my stuff? Yes, there is a, the amount of, of GMI and NGMI you can distribute um, will be tied to the length of time you're staking for. If you if you haven't been staking in KD in like in Cadex for a long time, then you might not be able to distribute a lot of GMI points. But if you've been staking like consistently for uh, for nine months or, or twelve months or something like that, then you'll have you know more GMI you can distribute on like yeah, a that, weekly basis. That's like in other words, we are this you know we are incentivizing people to act in the, you know to be good actors because it's gonna take you like a big effort to be. A malicious actor. You need to stake your coins. You need to have your friends staking their KDX. So in a way, they will become part of the community, part of the project. So in you know, after they've been staking their coins for nine months, like do they really want to go against the proposal? Do they really want to go against the DAO? Right. I mean, if they do, they will lose all of their governance power and be you know out of the DAO too. Yeah, and and so also uh, we have a whole like DAO architecture that's like set up by certain roles. When you initially join the DAO, you'll receive like a role, uh, we're, we're still deciding on the names um, for how we want to name this. We're, we're playing with like some funny and cool things. But then to achieve like a role after that, you'll either have to like have been staking for like X amount of time or have a certain amount of like GMI points. Both of those metrics are very powerful because you may be staking for a while, but not super active in the community. And we still, want, we basically want to design a system and we are designing a system that ensures that everyone who's participating in CADEX, be it through financial means or, or pure community means, still has an equal say and is still able to have like a, a powerful voice in this community. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know what would be really sweet to add into that if you guys could, I, I'll probably be asking a lot here, but if there would be a way to vote, like let the community use their GMI points to vote towards projects, new projects to help prevent oh, against rug pulls. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. if there was something that like a community was voting on kind of thing, and like kind of like when new projects launch like okay like i wish there was just like a like a rating like a standard rating across the board kind of thing like i mean the audits are great but like we've seen a couple of those turn into rug pulls quite a few times so um it would just be nice to know like hey like is this new coin that's launching is it something that's connected to cadex like oh. so many people say they're partnered with Kadena already and i'm and i find that like some of them i find hard to believe but yeah like, how do you know who's partnered with who how do you know is there anywhere you guys are gonna be like if it's an official partner will they be advertised on cadex's like a partner if, if Cadex has any official partnerships, we will of announce. course announce them. Yeah. But where would they find that at in your in your Discord, Telegram, Twitter? Exactly. Yeah. 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 All of them. Yeah. Cool. We've we've spent a lot of time like looking at other uh, DAOs, how they operate, um, how voting power works, um, and how you know governance tokens sort of become not they they lose some of their value uh, in terms of uh, like the the actual weight of them. Um, and that people can sort of enter these systems without necessarily being like intrinsically aligned with the project and just like buy up governance tokens, do whatever they want, like vote on whatever they want uh, without actually having to have like a strong stake in the system. So one thing we decided to do was we decided to tie a user's actual voting power, um, like when voting on proposals, to how long they've been staking within the system for. Uh, and so we have basically a nonlinear multiplier that uh, begins right when you start staking and, you know, scoots right up to like a, a 1x voting power um, very quickly. But then over time, uh, sort of 
uh, peters off. And eventually after, I think, I, I think like after 24 months, it's almost like a 2x or like 2.2x mm -hmm. multiplier. We're still finalizing that number and doing some research uh, to really decide like what is going to be the most effective to give our users the best possible like experience there while also ensuring that it's like actually a, a strong and, and good system. And actually with that system, we're going to be launching um, NFTs as well that are representative of your voting power. So when you initially stake your tokens, um, like stake your KDX, you'll receive uh, an NFT, which is a, a randomly generated PFP that shows your uh, your voting power, um, possibly some reputational scoring that's like a, another system we're working in, and the amount of time you've been staked for. And so these NFTs are non, uh, non-transferable. They can be representative of you in the Kadena ecosystem. So yeah, we're, we're really excited about that. We think it's going to be super cool. Yeah. Dude, that is freaking sick, man. That's so cool. <laughs> now, since it's non-transferable, can I still will I still be able to share that NFT? Like show it off? Like will you be able to flex? Oh, your for sure, of course. Oh, that's sick. So you can like flex your KDA, uh, your KDA or your Cadex swag on Twitter yeah, and stuff like that. Stuff. And like, what's cool about these NFTs is they can theoretically be used across like multiple platforms on the Canadian ecosystem. So if like we, if Cadex and like another protocol have like a partnership, like that NFT can be representative of something like within that protocol as well. There's a lot of like cross DAO like utilization and pollination that can occur mm -hmm. with all of these things. Yeah, and you know that now that the Catan ecosystem of DeFi is growing. Very much so. The use case for the NFTs can be, you know, way bigger than it is now. Infinite almost. And all of this, Marian, it's possible because as you as you spoke with Doug, the Cadena blockchain gives you the possibility to swap for free. You don't have gas costs. So the amount of things that you can do in a DEX are just unlimited. Like you can mint NFT to represent your voting power. You can like swap an asset. We can swap an asset for you since we don't have cost to do it. You can actually provide liquidity in a DEX with just one asset. You don't need the both of them because we can swap your we can swap it off for you in the pool. When I'm adding liquidity and I go to pair something and then it gives me a flag and says, hey, you don't have enough BNB to execute this transaction. That'll never happen on Cat on CatX. It will never happen. And you can pro you can enter in the pool, but just with a single asset. You don't need both of them because we can swap the asset for you for the remaining 50% of the pool. And in this way, you can participate in a pool, provide liquidity and get the, you know, the 0.3% fee on the, on the volume but with a single asset, you don't need both of them. And that's very revolutionary for the industry. It's some, it's something that it's hard to find out there. So will you guys still be able to do like the LPs and everything like that? Yeah, yeah of we'll course, think. absolutely. Yeah, so so basically, um, this is actually a question that we get asked a lot, like how that the single-sided liquidity provision works. But yeah, so when you, there's like multiple ways to enter a pool. You can either provide both the A and B, um, or as uh, Danny was saying, you can provide just the A, and then like the swap occurs on the back end, uh, fifty percent of that, and then it puts it in the pool for you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so how on on Binance Smart Chain, for example, when I add B and B and Cake, for example, every time mm -hmm. somebody swaps Cake for B and B, they get charged a fee to, to swap that, right? And then I get a percentage yeah. of that fee, exactly. and I also get the liquidity pool tokens that I can stake and then earn rewards on. If exactly. there's no swap fees, how do people, how are people getting paid? No, for wait, no, there are swap fees, but there are no transaction costs external to the fees that you pay. Because what happens in Uniswap is that you pay the normal fee to swap an asset plus the gas cost in Ethereum, which you know nowadays is super high, as yeah. you probably know. So there's there's a standard 0.3% um, like swap fee that's like standard across all decks, um, uh, dexes I should say, uh, and of that 100% goes to the LPs, or I guess actually five bips go to KDX stakers as well, and then so stakers will be receiving five bips on every swap that occurs. So if there's like uh, let's say like a million dollars in swap volume, like fifty thousand dollars of that is going directly to KDX stakers divided up uh, by the number of stakers and, and their proportional staking amount. So Cadex isn't actually collecting any any fees on any of this. It's all about like we're, we're giving pretty much uh, everything back to the users and the LP providers mm -hmm. or the LPs, I should say. So how does Cadex make money to like maintain the infrastructure that uh, you guys are building? Ryan, you don't need to make money. You know that the Cadena blockchain can okay. scale so it's literally what Uniswap does in the Ethereum blockchain, but they have costs and costs that we don't. 
because Cadena can scale. Actually, the DEX is the perfect product to build on Cadena because it's a scalable proof of work. So it's the most secure blockchain that you can find in the world. It's the most democratic democratic blockchain because you don't have the proof of stake where people, you know, hold a large portion of tokens and they actually are the biggest owner of the company, of the project. Here, you have to mine it and it's secure. So when you build a DEX on a proof of work layer one, it becomes really secure. And here you have the possibility to scale it, which makes it like a, like unique, like one of a kind DEX for sure. Yeah. So this is the part I really still don't fully understand. Like on Uniswap, they take gas fees, there's slippage, and then there's the actual transaction fees. So from what I understand in this interview, they're saying that 100% of the transaction fees is going to be distributed out to stakers and CADEX gets nothing. And I'm just thinking about the largest businesses in the world what do they all have in common? They spend more money marketing than every other competitor, and that's why they're on top. So I'm watching Uniswap. They're on people's YouTube channels. They're sponsoring this, they're sponsoring that. In business, whoever can afford to pay the most to buy the customer wins that business every time. So I, I'm all about it being completely free, right? Like that's that's huge. But at the same time, if there's no and I, and they're saying something about like like treasury and staking and that like that i personally like as a user if there is a 0.3 percent fee i think that a percentage of that should go to the cadex foundation it should go to a treasury that's dedicated specifically for marketing purposes but having no direct revenue source being generated from a dex it seems like it, it, it might be a great marketing play from like a user aspect and a community aspect and being the best DEX in the first DEX on Cadena. But if the next DEX comes after CADEX and they add superior value proposition, better user interface, better everything, all of the above, and then they also take a percentage and then they, they can out market you, I, I think that that might be a thing. But I don't know. Obviously, I don't Obviously, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I want, I want to learn more on that. And, and I personally think that they should take a percentage of that for their foundation because they're doing all this work and we appreciate the fact that we can use your DEX and all of the amazing features like paying a fraction of a percentage of a fee or if I'm already paying that 0.3% instead of giving 5% to stakers, give 4.5% to stakers. It's just that that little fraction of a bit will add up so much and then take all of that extra money and throw it at marketing and blow this thing off the map. <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm curious on how, like when you guys need to do things, are you guys just thinking that the original tokens that you guys have will gain so much value that it'll be able to pay for everything? Or how do you guys pay your engineers to make updates if you guys aren't taking any fees? Okay, um, let me tell you about our tokenomic structure because that's really interesting. What we did is that we, we had a fair lunch. We had a first sale in July where we collected a good amount of KDA to run the operations, but we only gave to the team 5% of the tokens available because KDX has a fixed supply of 100 mil and the team, can, the team only receives 5 million, which is not much compared to the industry. Uh, so the rest of the, of the tokens are allocated for a, for a community sale for around 30% and a 65% as network incentives. So what happens is that when you enter in this tax, of course, we want to be attractive for LPs, for liquidity, because these people are, you know, attractive by the higher incentive in the, mm -hmm. you know, in the DEX world. And what we did is that we created a system of incentives that first will attract liquidity and make, you know, increase volume in the platform. But with time, people will stay in the platform because it's, it's gas free and it's secure. Like, why would you want to leave a platform like that? Um, and the other thing uh, to your question about sort of how CADEX makes money, because we did this initial token sale and we have a fair amount of runway, uh, our idea is basically to progressively decentralize the system to a point where the team, all of the engineers, everyone is operating out of the DAO and basically paid based on like KPIs uh, and through grants. And those systems uh, will all be run essentially by the DAO and by the community. And I always tell you guys, I'm going to keep it real, even though I absolutely love CADEX, Let's ask the hard question next, right? Uniswap, quote unquote, is decentralized and they unlist 100 tokens without taking a community vote. Why? Because the DEX, Uniswap is decentralized. Those tokens are still on Uniswap, but guess what? Who owns the website that actually interacts with that user interface? You see what I'm saying? Uniswap says the tokens are still on Uniswap, but you can't access them because they decided their centralized, quote unquote, decentralized DEX isn't, how is it decentralized if I can't access it? 
right? If you're able to cut off the single point that I have access to, and you're able to do things without the community vote, you're not decentralized. You guys can say you are. And that's why the SEC says DeFi is only decentralized by name and why all of these cryptocurrencies that quote unquote claim they're decentralized are not really decentralized. So I'm really curious, I forgot to ask this, is CADEX the same way? Is, does the user interface to CADEX, the actual website, is that owned by the DAO? If it is and controlled by the DAO and the DAO gets to choose what tokens get delisted, this DEX is gonna blow Uniswap out of the water. If it's not, then it's just the same way. So what ends up happening is everyone starts getting paid uh, through tokens we would at some point stop collecting like a salary, I'm sure, like directly from CADEX. We would become members of the DAO and just sort of operate on the same level as everyone else. So CADEX can also introduce additional products down the road mm -hmm. um, that can be used to generate income for CADEX and for the DAO. There's a lot of ways that CADEX, the CADEX DAO can actually generate income for itself. Like for example, the, the DAO could vote to like allocate a portion of the community tokens to uh, a staking pool. Uh, and could actually generate fees off of CADEX itself and then distribute those fees like to users, could distribute those fees to projects. The applications of what DAOs can do is, is effectively limitless. You know, we could uh, bootstrap liquidity in new pools. We could, you know, obviously stake. We could invest in other projects. Mm. Like there's a, there's a lot of routes that the DAO can take to actually like bring more value to the users and still ensure that like we're all getting taken care of, like the, the DAO is getting taken care of. And to me, this is where it kind of becomes a little bit hard because either way, like CADEX is going to the moon guys and I'm so excited to be a part of this project. But these are just the questions that I think everybody should be asking. So nothing against CADEX, love these guys. And like, I, I, I'm just saying that <laughs> smart people that make smart investing decisions wanna know those things, right? I don't need to know any of those and I'm throwing a lot of money at CADEX. So <laughs> just throw that out there. I, I talk like I'm like a, like a smart investor, Warren Buffett over here, and I'm over here like doing five minutes of research, throwing money at projects. So let's keep it real, guys. At the beginning, like our, our plan is not to generate income off of CADEX like for like the CADEX founding team. No, it's, this is not like a, a traditional journey. This is not like working in traditional industry. Here you're trying to make something new. And of course it has a lot of risk and you don't, you don't really know where you're going financially until you make it, until you know the platform is live, you see that the users love it, the volume is there, you made everything right. That's really our goal for now. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty freaking cool, man. That's nobody else is doing that. Nobody else is even think, even, that's just mind blowing that you guys are gonna do it for free for the most part. I mean, yeah, apart from the team token, it's, it's pretty much us trying yeah. to finish. You, yeah. guys could always, <laughs> you guys could always sell banner space on the site and run ads and generate easy. Re I mean, like, I mean, there's the amount of traffic that you would be bringing to that one banner ad would probably be worth enough to pay the entire team salary five times okay. over. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, but it's not really the goal. Yeah. I, I don't think we're looking at, at CADEX as like ad space. Yes. Could bring us revenue, but I don't think it's necessarily in line with our ethos. Probably not. Like we we want to make sure this is like a, a very strong democratic platform, and because it's a represent it's a product of a DAO. Like everyone always needs to be in alignment on like what uh, the DAO and like the entire Cadex and Kadena community is is working towards. And I've been playing around a lot with these ideas of like the metaverse and, and commodification. And I don't think necessarily running ads on CADEX is really like, sure, it could be great for us financially. But again, as, as Danny was saying, that's like not really what we're about. Good, man. I, I was just curious on more so like, how does the, how does it support itself? You know, five years from now, like how is it generating, if you guys aren't charging fees, how would it be generating enough money to- uh, there, is, there is some treasury for the foundation, for the DAO, for the operations. So they can so cover basically, that. People, yeah, people are gonna enter, you know, access yeah, that yeah. capital and use that if we were to introduce like um like a lending and borrowing platform theoretically then it's gonna happen eventually that's some <laughs> yeah. alpha right there yeah that's, that's what <laughs> i was hoping on man i was yeah. hoping oh on. my god um so yeah i mean if we were if we were to introduce something like that uh eventually like you know like revenue could possibly be generated off of that to support the dow uh, and support um the team yeah so can you explain a little bit more about like the dow and the dex itself so will the dow have its own governance token or are they kind of the same i guess i'm a little confused on that yeah, so KDX uh, will act as the governance token for the CADEX DAO. So when you start staking your KDX, you'll start accruing voting power. Um, and that can be used to basically vote on like various parameters and, and 
I, it's funny, we're going to end up using probably KIP as well. Uh, so Kadena is using KIPS, we're using KIPS. KIPS is like, would be like CADEX improvement protocol. So these various like KIPS could basically be used to change like various parameters around how CADEX operates. So right now, um, in, in our initial tokenomics model, the way it's set up is that basically when you provide liquidity to a pool and then withdraw that liquidity, there's multiple avenues that you can take when you're actually receiving your fees. Um, you can just take like your standard like allotment of like, oh, you put in A and B, you're going to get fees paid out in A and B. What you could also do instead is use your fees. Basically, you, you don't receive your fees in A and B, but your fees in A and B are used to burn a proportion of CADEX or of KDX tokens, which leads it to being slightly deflationary. And then you receive like a time vested amount of KDX that is on like a multiplier. So for example, I think in the diagrams we used online, we used a 5X multiplier. So if you were to receive like $300 in fees or something, um, you could use that $300 to burn $300 worth of KDX and then receive a multiplied amount based on your fees, which would be like 1500 KDX. And that would be paid out to you over time. Let, let me add something here. Yeah, that's yeah. precisely what's, what I was saying before with the you know liquidity incentives for LPs. When we're going to launch, our platform is going to be really attractive for liquidity. Like people that would bring liquidity will get you know some crazy rewards because of course that's how it works. You need to give the best incentives to bring on liquidity, and then if the product is good, people will stay in the in in the decks. Exactly. We'll never leave it. We'll have no reason to leave it. They will accrue rewards, and once rewards will slow down because rewards are a logarithm function, what will happen is that the token will be circulating way more. We will will be almost all off all out in the market. And so the price will appreciate. So, okay, you're getting less rewards, but now, you know, the token should rise in value. Yeah. And, and so all of these various parameters uh, that we're discussing, such as like emission rates and everything, those can be controlled by the DAO. So the DAO could vote on how to incentivize or disincentivize certain pools. So if um, there's a pool that is, you know, not necessarily, that doesn't have a lot of volume, um, like not a lot of like assets like A and B, like a, let's say like a Bitcoin KDA pair or something. And there just isn't a lot of liquidity provided to that pool. The DAO could vote to increase the, the parameterization on that to actually increase the amount of like rewards a user would get in, in the form of KDX when removing liquidity in option two or collecting fees. So in this way, uh, the community can effectively decide like the, the economy of, of CADEX, which is pretty cool. Of course. That is so freaking cool. So can you explain a little bit more about these bridges? Now, when you guys are having like the Ethereum bridge will be done, you know, within a couple months or whenever in the next, whenever it gets done. And when that bridge is actually built, does that mean I can send any ERC-20 token to CADEX? Or am yeah, I- Yeah, that have wrapped version of them. Effectively, yeah, yeah. So how does that work? Like, I know like I have to actually buy wrapped ETH and then send wrapped ETH over or I come over to CADEX and I take, say, Bitcoin and Ethereum and swap them and it wraps one. So what you're going to do is that you probably need to have wrapped Ethereum to bring on. We cannot make it. We cannot wrap it for you. OK. Anything that enters the Kadena blockchain will have to be uh, wrapped on like the side it's coming from, you know, and then basically be, be bridged over, which is fairly standard for like if you're like uh, the, the near rainbow bridge, for example, works in a very similar way. That you basically, as you you provide liquidity, you take your asset A, it gets wrapped, and then it's uh, basically put through the bridge. It goes through like I think ten confirmations, and then it appears to you. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly how the the bridges will work for Kadena. I mean, there are different bridges because like when you bridge, uh, let's say Bitcoin on Ethereum, you are giving like the possibility to to have an asset that represents like a synthetic asset that represents Bitcoin right. value in the Ethereum blockchain. So what is going to happen is the same thing. You're going to have like a synthetic assets that reproduce, let's say, Ethereum price, Ethereum as an asset, as an asset on the Cadena blockchain, and in this case, in CADEX. Yeah. It's gonna be so what is happening now is the opposite. Like now, Cadena is being wrapped to live on Ethereum. So like very soon, you're going to be able to trade wrapped Cadena on Uniswap, which is already going to be big. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's already massive. like a massive thing that's in great. the industry. And what will happen next is the opposite process. Like you will be able to use wrapped Ethereum on the Cadena blockchain, which is even cooler because in the Cadena blockchain, you don't have this gas cost. You don't have this possibility of moving to proof of stake. 
or you use a coding language which is way more secure than what is out there because first hackers don't know it don't know like no no hackers don't know it is not the right sentence but it's a different programming language so there is no history of hacks there is no like copy and paste between projects you really have to put the work to build something you cannot just copy the uniswap code as you know binance did back in the days and, and just put out your decks you have to build something from scratch and develop it in part yeah and and eventually what as we see more projects start to grow and build on cadena um we'll see a lot more innovation happening with pact um like i've i've spent a fair amount of time like going over uh like pact and, and learning the syntax and, and spending some time like actually in the Chainweaver web wallet and just like you know reading through smart contracts really understanding like how the language works i'm not an engineer by trade but i've been able to like slowly like start to pick it up and so i mean if i can do it and i'm kind of smooth brain sometimes uh, <laughs> you know i think that the collective community should really like start to like innovate a lot with pact and and we'll see like the potential it has yeah and because it is a very secure language i mean it's um it's functional programming at its finest right so who else are you guys bringing on to the cadex team so we um we just received a recommendation um, for a female smart contract engineer um, who should be joining us shortly. She's very talented, still in school, uh, learning Pact right now, um, and just has shown like a lot of potential and a lot of promise as as a candidate. And this is something we love to see. We love to see people entering, uh, you know, the Katana ecosystem, learning Pact, and and really like giving their all into it. Yeah, I mean, we're we're all about it. We're really excited for her to be joining the team. That's huge, man. I love to see that more women are joining the space and I love to see how, how diverse the Kadena team is. And then you guys are just, you know, keeping up with that same ethos. It seems like Absolutely. I was, I've been trying to promote it and bring as many women on the channel. So when she, if she does come on board, I would love to interview her and, uh, and promote oh, yeah. it well for you guys. So yeah. Yeah, she's, she's, she's still, still in college. She has a yeah. full like course schedule, like, and she's learning packed at the same time. Like that's insanely impressive. Um, in which my, is for us, we're all, we're all like, like, hell yeah. Like that's yeah. dope. I was in my private telegram telling my uh, my students today that like you guys realize what the industry is paying for a an engineer, right? Like and you don't have to necessarily have a degree. You have to be able to code and pack, right? Like if you can write good code, like you don't necessarily need a degree. And so I was like, you guys would be crazy because I taught myself as for like a I was controls engineer in the robotics industry or in the automotive industry and just by working extra a couple extra hours a day, I was able to teach myself something that people were going to school for, and that I can, and then just yeah. understanding how easy Pact is from what people have explained to me about it, that it's not rocket science. You guys just got to put the time and work in, and you'll learn it. And then Will was saying that you can, you are a hundred times more efficient when you are coding in Pact versus Solidity. So in theory, what that means, what would you guys say is the ratio? significantly more straightforward in how you approach uh, writing code. Solidity, you're always having in like specific, let's say we're, you're trying to deploy in like Ethereum, for example. With every smart contract you write, you're having to optimize for gas, which means you want to deploy like as few smart contracts as possible, which means your smart contract ends up becoming like a very, very okay. long in-depth contract itself. And so what that leads to is potential confusion in like which like functions are doing what, um, further down the road, or like as you get deeper into the contract itself. Whereas with with Pact, it's just like this is what it does, this is how it does it, and and, and so it's it's just a uh, it's, yeah, it's just like this is what it does and this is how it does it. That um, has to be then. That has to be so much faster, and it has to be that much easier for new people to like come into the space and and learn how to use it. Yeah, um, I mean, I think uh, so. Pact was of course designed like from the ground up to be as like simple as possible for people to come in and read. I know they they made a, a massive effort to ensure that like lawyers, bankers and, and basically traditional uh, like roles could have easy access to um, this language and, and these smart contracts. Um, okay. And that's sort of when, when we look at sort of how crypto has evolved, we've seen it sort of go from um, it, it's still very like engineer focused on on the building side like solidity is not an easy language to parse through if you haven't really written code before whereas pact is basically designed from the ground up for everyone to for anyone to be able to come in read it observe it and understand like exactly how the smart contract is functioning and that's like really critical for the growth of, of crypto as a whole um because obviously if we're building like DeFi for everyone if we're building crypto for everyone then everyone should have access to it and everyone should be able to read it and everyone because. should be able to understand it. What would be like the latest that we that we would be able to do actually get on CADEX and like 
kind of start swapping and staking. And when you guys launch, is everything going to be ready to rock right as soon as you guys launch, or are there things going to be slowly rolling out? No, it's going to be ready to throw up. Yeah, I mean, you can actually, you can use Cadex right now. So it's, we're in like basically an open beta. The swap interface is live. Like you can go and we, there's one pair on there, uh, KDA Flux. So you can swap your KDA for Flux, your Flux for KDA. You can uh, provide liquidity to that Get pool. Rewards. Earn rewards. Uh, try the gas fee experience. Yeah, <laughs> and enjoy never having to pay gas fees again. Enjoy this very unique feature of yeah. swapping for free. Which is insane, dude. Yes, it's the best feature. But really. it, that's only the start, right? I mean, when we're gonna launch, you're gonna you're gonna see many different tokens brought on on our platform. You're gonna see, you know, many different tools, new interfaces. Like, uh, just gonna be a better experience. Like, we're probably uh, I don't know if I should say, but like, we're probably gonna work on. We're working on like new wallet extension, like new. We you can, know, we can say that. Yeah, I, I can say that. On the website today. We have a we have a web extension wallet that we've been working on for a while. Um, so you won't need to necessarily worry about like swapping between like Zellcore and and your and the actual swap interface itself. It'll just it will function very similarly to MetaMask. Um, right in the corner, you can connect easily um, and just yeah. swap from there. And it, it's like a fully native like uh, Cadena system Cadena as wallet. well. Yeah. yeah, and it's gonna be such a good UX because you you know not many, you will not need so many clicks to enter the DEX. It's yeah. gonna be so pleasant. And just bring your own liquidity from your wallet and you know get those nice fees <laughs> yeah what tc but the dex what would you say out of all extension wallets is your guys's favorite i personally love phantom how close is it going to be to as user friendly as phantom phantom is dope um i really like their ux and their ui as well um i also really like clover clover is a really cool wallet a little unknown right now Never but heard. i'm a big fan of it i'll have to check that one out as soon as we get done here I mean, I have a million questions. I'll keep asking, but if you got, I figure let we. And also to to add on to the whole like staking and reputation system, because your voting power is tied to your staking time uh, and how much KDX and how long you've been staking it for. When you unstake your KDX, your your voting power actually begins to like diminish. So. Th what this sort of ensures is that like if someone is just like ready to like get out of the system like they they don't really care about caddix anymore um and they unstake anytime they go to vote be it on-chain voting oh also uh voting will probably never cost gas on of caddix course. yeah we'll we'll be able to pay the gas not like probably. with ethereum you not see probably. like <laughs> yeah okay uh, it's for sure. For sure. <laughs> um like with ethereum like i know there's a few DAOs that i'm a part of and that i'm still like a very active participant in and like whenever I go to tally to do like on-chain voting, it can be like anywhere from like 15 to like a hundred dollars to to vote on something. And like that's just a bad user experience. Like, and then you have to get into like delegating to people um if you don't want to pay that every time, but then you have to trust that person to ensure they're always going to vote the way you would like want them to vote. And it's it's a mess. So we're just saying like no gas on voting. That's so yeah. freaking cool. So let's do a recap because I got another interview right after this. So I have to run here in a second, but let's yeah. run back through everything. What are the highlights? What, where can everybody find you guys at? And when can we get you guys on the show again? <laughs> highlights, gas free decks. Yep. First one out there. First one, best one. Well, not the best one, but it's up there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gas free decks were a truly democratic and equitable governance system for our users, fully decentralized, full DAO. Um, it's interoperable because it means that you can interact with other chains. It gives you the possibility to bring liquidity with just one asset, which is very new in the industry yeah. as well. It has a very structured and programmatic liquidity mining program. So it means that we have a program to attract liquidity, which is thought out, you know, to work precisely with a vesting schedule of around like three to four years. Um, we'll be announcing a sale in the, the few weeks okay. um, of 1 million KDX that'll be open for the public. For the public. Um, How much so, notice are you guys going to give us? As in like, hey, we're, we're getting ready to do the sale tomorrow or a couple of days or? Um, there will be notice. There will be notice. There yeah. will be notice. We want to make sure like if, if people want KDX, they're able to get it. You know? Yeah, but we will leave the, the window open for a bit. Yeah, we're, it's, it's we're not going to be like one hour sale, come get yeah. your KDX I and mean, then like close it. Like, no, we won't do anything. My like projection. That. Yeah. It's going to go out in um, 10 minutes. I mean, well, there's only, sorry, there's only a limited amount, right? Yeah. We're selling 1%. Yeah. yeah. So once that 1% sells out, it's out, right? It's out. Yeah. It's out and in the hands of people who want it. And then you'll, when we launch, you'll be able to stake that KDX to, to earn five bips on every swap as well as accrue voting power and, you know, become like a, 
an active and powerful member in the DAO. Uh, I want to say one thing. This is the first project where the team has a very short amount of token, just 5%. Yeah. The community were able to enter in the ICO for 16%, which is a, you know, a large amount. Now we're giving again the possibility to enter with the other 1%. If we're not like getting huge players that you know will own like five percent of the project, no, here it's all decentralized. Yeah, exactly. And you, and you said it. How long is the vesting period on the team's tokens? I mean, it doesn't even matter. You're uh, only getting five percent. Who cares? <laughs> it's at least two years. At least two years before we can even touch it. That's huge, man. All right, YouTube. So that's a wrap on my interview with the CADEX team. Special thanks to Daniel. Special thanks to Grant. I appreciate both you guys for coming on the show. Sorry guys, I abbreviated Dan's name down there because I couldn't make it fit and look good. So I, I apologize if I had that name on there wrong. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you guys and I am so hyped guys. This is how we are going to be yield farming. This is how we're going to be liquidity pool mining. This is how we are going to take our Kadena and make passive income. And I'm gonna teach you guys every step of the way, everything from how to yield farm, how to borrow, lend, stake, like this DEX is gonna be off the hook. Now, I don't know if they're actually going to be doing a lending platform built into their DEX, but could you imagine just having one DEX and being able to borrow, lend, stake, yield for free, swap, NFTs, bear... You guys gotta do me a favor. If you guys are hype about this, you guys gotta go over, follow CADEX on Twitter, go drop a tweet, tell everybody how hyped you guys are about this one, guys, because this is gonna be the holy grail, in my personal opinion. So, never investing advice, always make your own decisions, but watch this coin, it's gonna be something special. But you guys gotta do me a favor too, you guys gotta swing over to their Twitter. I'm gonna have all of this scrolling across the screen, so here's their Twitter, their Discord. You guys gotta swing over there, show them some love, because this is gonna be one of those game changers, guys. Check out my next price predictions video, dropping tomorrow.